So hey everybody, before uh, we get into the episode proper this week, uh, I, uh, I recorded the episode uh, kind of in an impromptu fashion uh, in a public place, and so, uh, and I was just kind of riffing, you'll see, it's coming right up, but also there was, uh, there was a voicemail, there was some feedback from uh, last week's, uh, the last episode, episode three, on relationships, so I want to play the, uh, the 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 voicemail, and then we'll get into the uh, the actual um, the actual episode, right? Okay. Hey Matt, this is Scott Roche. I just wanted to uh, send you this little audio file and tell you that I listened to your most recent episode on relationships. Uh, you and your friend Meryl are awfully cute together um and i am glad that you found somebody to share the next however long you guys are together with um i have been in a, a monogamous relationship for over 21 years now that's hard for me to believe my wife and i will have been married 21 years at the end of this month and we dated uh for probably a year and a half or so um before that so it's hard for me to believe on a number of levels because one, um, I didn't have a real girlfriend until her. And the history of my parents' marriages and my wife's parents' marriages uh, are much shorter. So uh, it's just been phenomenal. It's full of challenges and uh, we've gotten so much better about everything. Um, over the last, I'd say, eight or nine years. So it's just been amazing and hard and uh, full of all kinds of interesting complications. And we have three kids together and really um, amazing, the, the whole thing, just that we've survived it, that she's not hit me in the face with a shovel yet. And, um, you know, that, uh, that, that, it's, that it's lasted as long as it has. And hopefully it will last. 40 more years and 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 or, or more as long as we both shall live and that kind of thing so that's it i enjoyed the episode and we'll talk to you soon thank you scott for uh for the voicemail and uh, you know as i'm recording this now it's april 30th so i think it's safe to say happy anniversary to you and your wife and that's uh that's pretty great um I've never made it beyond uh, nine years or so, uh, and so uh, wow, you know. And my parents were uh, well, my my mother and and stepfather, um, they were together for uh, uh, something like thirty years um, before uh, my mother called it quits. But uh, most of that time was not uh, not a uh, bed of roses. <laughs> So, you know, good for you guys. That's, uh, that's fantastic. Uh, that kind of partnership, that kind of knowledge and understanding of each other must be remarkable and, and uh, a gift. And um, that's pretty great. Pretty neat. Um, Scott Roche, thanks for the comment. And now we're going to get into uh, episode four. Here we go. Here it comes, right now. My name is Matthew Wayne Selznick, and I know this much. I am not doing enough. Welcome to I Know This Much. Uh, this is episode four of my periodic audio and video podcast wherein I talk about whatever's on my mind. Um, philosophy, science, creativity, productivity, spirituality, politics maybe, relationships, whatever's on my mind. And uh, tonight, you can probably hear the wind, maybe a little bit. Hopefully this isn't so windy to such a degree that uh, that this is wasted time, but it won't be wasted time because I kind of just need to suss out some, some things for myself, talk about some things, and I feel like uh, 
like that's in the spirit of this podcast. So um, I'm uh, at a park in uh, in Long Beach, my my town, and um, it's uh, I don't know, a little bit after nine o'clock on Wednesday, April twenty seventh, as I record this. Um, you know, things are going really good relationship wise. Uh, if you saw episode three. Um, with my very special guest, <laughs> Meryl Phillips. We talked all about relationships in the context of our relationship. She's my girlfriend, I'm her boyfriend. And um, I couldn't be happier with this woman. Uh, it's just, I think, there are some other things that, other areas of my life that uh, are not going well and continue to not go well and the, the the biggest one of those is my creative output I've been a freelancer full-time well let me put it this way I have been putting all of my full-time efforts into being a freelancer since October of 2011 when I was uh, laid off from the uh, digital marketing agency that I worked for. Whole other story there. And um, it's been rough. It has not been easy for me to to keep ahead of the uh, the great big rolling uh, eight ball um, or to stay out from behind the eight ball or I'm, I'm sort of picturing that scene in Indiana Jones where he trips the the trap and the great big boulder starts rolling after him uh, except it's an eight ball right it's been hard um, and it's probably been the the the, the number one source of stress for me um, all these years uh, and it leads to and contributes to stress uh, in other areas um, I have uh, an elderly mother that I can't take care of as well as I would like can't provide for as well as I would like um, just wondering, you know, living from month to month trying to figure out if I'm going to be able to cover my own expenses and, and debts. I have, uh, I have debts uh, left over from marriages, <laughs> marriages <laughs> that, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, credit card debt, that kind of thing, from, from, from recovering from those situations. Anyway, I... I Money, 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 money. It always comes down, hey, somebody must have done something awesome back there at the uh, sports ball game. I don't know if you can hear the cheering. <laughs> um, anyway. Chasing after money is making me... It's sapping my energy. It's, it's, it's causing me to not uh, not be able to do as much as I would like in uh, in my creative works, my creative endeavors. Or, boy, you know, I uh, I go back and forth because I'll say something like that, and then I think, you know, there's plenty of people out there who hold down full-time jobs, and they still manage to create stuff, and they still manage to hustle. Maybe I just don't have the energy. Maybe I just don't have the initiative. Maybe I'm not that guy. I know I'm the guy who wants a balance, you know? And I don't feel balanced. And I think that uh, 
part of that is 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 that I uh, I'm just not disciplined enough. And boy, you know, if you've been listening to me yak in one form or another, in one medium or another, for the last 16 years, you know that this is not an uncommon. This isn't. This is nothing new for Matthew Wayne Salznick. Um. I'm going to be 50 years old in two years. Actually, damn. Year and uh, a little over a year. I'll be 49 in July. It's April now. It's almost May. Um, that's crazy. Um, I am not, not where I thought I would be at this age. I'm not where I thought I would be last year at this time. Um, life gets in the way, sure, but at a certain point, at a certain point you have to uh, get in the way of life. <sighs> anyway, this is an especially rambly episode. I realize that. Episodes like this are the reasons why very few people actually listen to or watch this podcast, but uh, I've never really been concerned about that. Um, what I do in terms of podcasting has always been very much just for the people who like what I do. I am a niche of one. Uh, as I think it's Seth Godin has said. And hey, you know, that's supposed to be a positive thing. I think my issue, my challenge, is uh, filling that niche with enough stuff. Um... I think if I had to be honest, and that's the point of this podcast, right? I was really disappointed uh, by the reception, or lack thereof, for my last novel. I think it was probably, it was certainly far better than my first novel. Um, but the thing is, my first novel was released as a free podcast, and 30, 40, 50,000 people experienced that free podcast. A tiny, tiny fraction uh, bought the book version of that novel, that first novel, Brave Men Run. And while everybody clamored for Volume 2, Pilgrimage, when it came out, um, I'm guessing they didn't want to pay for it. The people who have read it, the people who have reviewed it, love it. Um, and every now and again, I will hear from somebody who enjoyed Brave Men Run as a free podcast, and they're like, um, yeah, I can't wait until you release your second book as a, as a podcast. I'm like, well, I'm not doing that, but... It, for less than five bucks, you can read it. Um, I'm so rambly tonight. Anyway, people said they wanted it. The 140 or so people who put down money ahead of time to see it become a thing, to see it be made, uh, got it. And all. That's about it. And then I, uh, and then I released a short story collection called Four Stories. And uh, I talk about being a niche of one. It, 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 it was not... If I was a commercial writer, my publisher would drop me for, for submitting a work unlike anything else I had, had published. 
four stories is literary fiction as opposed to the sort of science fiction fantasy of Brave Men Run and Pilgrimage. Um, again, I think some of my best work, but not what people want from me. Not what the people who know me want from me. And I think I've taken a bit of a hit, maybe, psychologically. I think I'm not uh, as willing to invest the time in another novel, in more short stories, when, um, when the return on investment just doesn't seem to be there. And God, even as I say that, I feel like that's a cop-out. Do I want to write or not? Do I want to make music or not? And the answer is, yeah, I want to do both those things. But I find myself not doing those things when I'm wondering where the money's going to come from. Somebody out there right now is, is one of you is listening to this or watching this and saying, get a job, Selznick. Uh, that's always in the works. Part of my situation is that I have to be very, very flexible with my time so that I can help, I mentioned, my elderly mother. She's going to watch this and she's going to feel very guilty and very bummed out. Um, don't, Mom. This is just how it is. I am the sole relative within 3,000 miles to take care of my 80-year-old mom. And she doesn't live with me, she doesn't live near me. But I need to be available to uh, help her out with things, take her to doctor's appointments, things like that. Um, so I need the flexibility of, of the freelance life, or at least of working from home, and being able to take off a weekday um, every couple of weeks or more often, sometimes. Anyway. As I was walking to this park, I was reminded of something. It just kind of came to me. It's the sort of thing that, that periodically springs to mind. Uh, you know, the idea that you have to pay yourself first. You have to invest in yourself before you invest in others. And that is, in, in my context, that means working on my own stuff and investing energy into my own stuff before I invest in time and energy on client work. I understand the principle so, so difficult for me to, to execute upon because if I'm not doing something that's going to lead to a check from a client, I feel guilty. I feel, uh, you know, like I'm, I'm, I'm deliberately walking close to the edge of the cliff. Ray Bradbury famously said, you have to jump off the cliff and grow your wings on the way down. <sighs> that just leads me down this cascade of, of thoughts and call them excuses if you want. When I think of that, I think of what would happen if I jumped off the cliff? What would that even mean? Would it mean, um, I don't know. Because I have these financial responsibilities. I have these familial responsibilities. And I want to have a life. I I'm not cut out to, 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 not cut out. I choose 
not to uh, be all work and no play. I want the I want to have experiences with my girlfriend. I want to relax once or twice a month. Uh, I, I I joke, not joke, that I take hours off, not days. And I'm sick of that. And whether I'm I'm working for my own creative works or working on client stuff. I don't want to just work and work and work. <sighs> I sound like such a whiny son of a bitch. Here's the thing. God, I, 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 I'm so on the edge of self-censorship, thinking about what people are going to think when they watch this or listen to this. People I care about people whose opinions matter to me, no matter how much I say, I don't care what other people think. Well, I don't care what strangers think. If you don't know me and you're watching this and you're going to form an opinion, I could give a shit, truly. But I don't want the people that I love and that I respect to think that I'm not willing to work hard. That's not what I'm saying. I think what I'm saying is I'm tired. <laughs> I'm tired. And, uh, and that's leading to some frustration. I think this is what I'm going to try. You know, I opened this podcast saying I know this much. I'm not doing as much as I can. I think that's what I said. I'm going to have to go back and, and, and watch because I've really just been riffing for however long I've been talking to you. Here's what I think I'm going to do. For the first week of May, uh, I am getting a little break. Meryl and I are... are carving ourselves out a tiny little bit of time off. We're going somewhere, and we're staying somewhere, and we're not going to have a whole lot of money to do much of anything, but I'm so looking forward to getting the hell out of Dodge with my girl and, 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 and just relaxing and being with each other and, and disconnecting from the everyday routine for two, three days. So we're going to do that first week of May. And when I come back, you know, my schedule's pretty flexible. Some, some days I start really early, some days I start 12, 1, 2 o'clock and work into the night. But when I come back, regardless of when I am starting my quote work unquote day, the first two hours are going to be for me. I'm not going to look at email. I'm not going to be on social media. I'm not taking calls. Those first two hours are for me working on whatever it is, whatever I'm, whatever's on the plate that invests in my creative future, whether that's a short story or a novel or a nonfiction work, or whatever it is. Two hours, first thing, every day that I work. And that leaves, really, that still leaves six plus hours, at least, every work day, to work on client stuff. And if I can't make that be enough, then I'm not working smart, right? I'm not working... Uh, I'll need to change my productivity, my habits in that regard. I need to get away from the idea that I'm making things for anyone but myself. People want to a sequel to Brave Men Run, I gave it to them and they didn't read it. Those who did read it loved it. 
I don't have any doubt that that book is a good, good book. But I have to stop thinking about whether or not what I make is going to sell. Two hours a day making things that make me happy, that inspire me to put my best energy and my best work into it. And we'll see what happens. Yeah. All right. Um, if you have a comment on what I've been talking about, advice, commiseration, uh, if you want to verbally slap me upside the head for being a whiny, sad sack, whatever. I love your feedback. Um, you can uh, leave comments on the show notes for this. I know this much, episode four at mattselznick.com. You can leave a comment on uh, my YouTube channel for this episode. Uh, you can, if you are one of my Patreon patrons, you can of course leave a comment right there in Patreon on the entry for this episode. Uh, you can use your phone to record a little voice message and email that to mwsmedia at gmail.com. You can, of course, just write a regular old email and send that to the same address, mwsmedia at gmail.com. I'd like to hear what you think about all this. If you're a creative person, if you're not a creative person and you struggle with issues of productivity and, 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 and serving yourself, um, I'd like to hear about it. Um, if you would like to support this show, um, I will never have any sponsors or anything like that on the show. It's 100% patron supported. Uh, you can become a patron at patreon.com slash Matt Selznick, M-A-T-T-S-E-L-Z-N-I-C-K. There'll be a link on the video and in the show notes if you're into the audio. Um, for as little as a dollar a month, you will get access to the uh, unedited video edition of every episode of I Know This Much. For three dollars a month or more, you'll get access to the unedited video and audio, so you have a choice of how you consume it. There are other pledge levels, monthly pledge levels, that uh, have their own sets of perks involved. Go to patreon.com slash Matt Selznick for more information about that. Um, yeah. Rate and comment and review the show at uh, iTunes or on YouTube. Blah, blah, blah. Feedback, ratings. Let me know you're out there, that you are uh, interested in this niche of one <laughs> in this rambly uh, personal journal podcast, vidcast, whatever in the hell we're calling new media these days. I don't think we even call it new media anymore, do we? All right. I think it's time to walk back to the apartment and get back to work. My name is Matthew Wayne Selznick. Take care.